At Little Rock, Governor Forbus has returned from a weekend of rest in the country, and he told reporters that the next step toward resolving the crisis over the integration of schools in Arkansas's capital is up to the federal government. By the governor's order, the city's four high schools will not open tomorrow. And one report, unconfirmed, has it that the Justice Department will take the first step in the morning to challenge the legality of the governor's move to sidestep compliance with the Supreme Court order for an immediate resumption of integrated classes at Central High School. The Air Force is still officially silent on the performance of the Atlas intercontinental ballistic missile it launched during the night from Cape Canaveral. But the unofficial word is that the test was the third in a row to be judged totally successful, with the nose cone coming down on a target 3,000 miles away. Now the word is the Atlas will get its first all-out test in a few weeks when it will be aimed at a target more than 6,000 miles distant. From Chicago comes word of the arrest of a man who might be the country's oldest active burglar. His name is Ernest Ruler, and his age is 78. It took three men to subdue him when he was found prowling today in a Chicago home. And he told the police, I was just do doing what I know best. I can't break the habit. And now a word from Chevrolet. This is Art Baker speaking for Chevrolet in behalf of your local authorized Chevrolet dealer who invites you to come in and take a look at the only all-new car in the low-price field, Chevrolet. Remember, drive with care everywhere. Chevrolet brings you the news 12 times each weekend on CBS Radio. This is the CBS Radio Network. You're tuned to WBT Radio, serving Charlotte and the Carolinas with complete weather information. The weather forecast is generally fair and somewhat warmer tonight and Monday, partly cloudy and warm with a chance of showers in the extreme west. Present temperature on the WBT thermometer, 76 degrees. 7 o'clock. city and in the territory on west, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Chester. You like that? Uh, no. Well, then, listen to this one. Chester, please. Chester! Chester! Yes, sir? Put the comb away, please. Hmm? Okay, Mr. Dunn, if you feel that way about it, Marshal I... Dillon. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm uh, Philip Locke from Philadelphia. I arrived on Santa Fe this morning. Ah, oh, well, you're a long way from home, Mr. Locke. I'm looking for someone. A girl, as a matter of fact. Well, there's lots of girls in Nod. You shouldn't have much trouble. If you please. Chester, please. Yes, sir. This girl wrote her mother in Philadelphia that she was teaching school here, Marshal. However, she's never been heard of at the school. Oh, well, maybe she moved on somewhere else. But they say she never was at the school. I'm afraid something's happened to her. Well, a lot of things can happen to people out here, Mr. Locke. That's precisely why I've come to you. I want you to find her immediately. <laughs> uh, Mr. Locke, you're not in Philadelphia. But I'll keep an eye open for her if you'll tell me her name and what she looks like. She's about five feet four. She's blonde. Very pretty girl. Her name is Laura Simmons. Laura Simmons? Yes, do you know her? No, he doesn't know her, neither do I. But I'll see what I can find out for you, Mr. Locke. Where are you staying? At the Dodge House, and I must say I've been in better hotels. Oh? 
Well, as bad as it is, you wait there, huh? I'll come to you if I have any news. It's most urgent that I find her at once, Marshal. Sure. Good day. Marshal Dillon. Hello, Laura. Well, come in, Marshal. Come in. Thank you. Hello, Matt. Ah, uh, Kitty. I didn't expect to find you in Laura's room. Well, how'd you know where I live, Marshal? You've never been here before. I asked Sam downstairs. Oh, no wonder he told you. I think Sam's sweet on Laura. Oh, Kitty. Well, I do. Oh, Kitty, uh, why did he ever do this? Look, you two can gossip about all that later, huh? Right now, I've got some news for you, Laura. You have? Yeah, there's a man here looking for you. Oh, who? His name's Philip Locke. Philip? Dodge? Yeah, I figured it might be bad news. I can't have him find me here. Well, he went to the schoolhouse first. And then I told him you'd probably moved on, but uh, he still thinks you're here somewhere. Well, I wrote Mother I was teaching at school. He must have gone to see her. Honey, if you don't want to see him, you don't have to. I can't see him. I can't have him know I work in a saloon. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. Especially now. What do you mean, Laura? Well, I was engaged to Philip once before I left Philadelphia. You were? Yeah, we were about to be married when his family found out that my father had been a riverboat captain. I should have told them before, I guess, but... Anyway, they called off the wedding, and I was so ashamed I ran away. I came out here, finally. What about Philip? What'd he do? The Locks are a very aristocratic family, Kitty. Guess he had to do what they wanted. Not much of a man, if you ask me. Aristocrat or not. I was in love with him. I think he was with me. Are you still? I don't know. How can I know? He mustn't find me here. This is the sort of life they said I was best suited for. He'd go back and tell my mother and it'd break her heart. Look, uh, Laura, you, you could go out to Ma Riley's until he leaves town. Huh? I'm sure she'd be glad for a little company. It's a good idea, Matt. Come on, honey. We can ride out together. It's only a few miles. All right, Kitty. Thank you. Matt, you might kind of spook this Philip Locke back to Philadelphia. Well, I'll try, Kitty. But I hate to see you not get your money's worth. Oh, I'll get it. When you decide it's time to buy us a beer. Oh, I'll buy it. I'll buy it. Is it about time, Doc? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, oh, tell me, Matt, is Laura still out at the Riley place? <laughs> oh, you're shying away from the problem, Doc, but uh, anyway, yeah, she's there. Locke isn't likely to leave town this soon. I saw him last night, and I told him that I'd heard that Laura had gone to Denver. Yeah, well, did he believe you? I don't think so. But I warned Sam to tell him the same thing in case he came snooping around here. Oh, well, it's a sad story. Poor girl. Mm, she's better off without the like of him, if you ask me. Yeah. Women are strange, sister. They fall in love, and that's that. I sometimes wonder if it has anything at all to do with a particular man. Why, of course it has, Doc. Uh, I remember what a little Kyle girl told me one time. She said, Chester, she said... I didn't know you spoke Kyle or Chester. Well, I don't exactly. We use a, a sign language kindly. You know... Uh, 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 hello, Lark. Marshal, I think you lied to me about Laura. Oh, is that so? It most certainly is. There's something mighty strange going on here, and I think you're mixed up in it. Look. Maybe Laura doesn't want to see you, huh? Have you thought of that? I'm going to see her if I have to kill you to do it. Kill me? Why, you ain't even wearing a gun, mister. I don't have to. What do you mean, Mr. Locke? 
I've hired a man who'll shoot anybody I say for five hundred dollars. Philadelphia must be quite a town. You have twenty-four hours to produce her, Marshal. And remember, I'm a man of my word. Yeah, I'm sure you are. Uh, well, the Mindy man. He's probably one of those who hired somebody to fight in the war for him, Doc. It's all he knows. Look, Mr. Duncan, you go over talking to people in America, Bar. Huh? Pete Dillon. So that's his gun. Looks like it. And of all the evil, no good, drunken crook, he ain't even much of a gunman. No. Yes, I always took Pete Dillon to be a little off in the head. He is, Doc. You never know what Dillon might do. He isn't like other men. And that makes him really dangerous. This morning, Matt. But she didn't say much. Well, she can't stay at that boarding house forever. Locke hasn't shown any signs of leaving. Maybe she ought to go on to Pueblo or Santa Fe or someplace for a while. Give her time, Matt. Hey, Kitty. Oh, you too, Marshal. Now, what is it, Sam? Uh, go on out back, both of you. What? What for? Well, you'll see. Go on, go on. I got to take care of the bar. Sam must be drunk. No, he's sober. <laughs> now, come on, let's have a look. All right. But I still say he's drunk. <laughs> uh, Sam doesn't drink his own liquor, Kitty. Well, I don't blame him. I wish I didn't have to. You don't? I wouldn't. I lived on a little chicken ranch somewhere. Man. Sam's liquor isn't that bad, Kitty. <laughs> Hello, Kitty. Marshall. Laura. What are you doing here? Hello, Laura. I didn't want to go inside just yet. Well, I've been sitting out here, talking to Sam. You mean you're coming back to work? Well, I've been thinking a lot about everything, and I'm going to face it out. Are you sure you're right, honey? There isn't any other way to do it. Philip came here because he wants me back. And I won't lie to him. Well, I guess it's up to you. Where do you want to talk to him? Marshal, would you find him and bring him here? Out here? No. Just take him to the bar inside. I'll meet him there later on. saloon is a curious place to meet Laura. Uh huh. Hey, you want another drink? No. How about you, Marshal? No, thanks. Hello, Philip. Laura. Laura, that dress. Like it? Why are you dressed like that? If you'll buy me a drink, Philip, I'll tell you. A drink? Of course. This is how I earn my living, so. You work here? Yes. Yeah. Now, will you buy me a drink to start with? No. Oh, Philip. <laughs> Never mind him, Laurie. You don't mean no. No. No, Sam. It's just like what his mother said about me. It's true. Philadelphia. Well, they know in Philadelphia. Lace on her pants. Here, Lauren. Have a drink. Thanks, Marshal. I need it. Why don't you go on home now? I'll get Kitty. Laura. Yes, Philip? 
Laura, I can't leave. I started to, but I can't. I came to find you. I'm going to take you back with me. You are? Yes. This is quite a shock to me, of course, seeing you here in this place, but I can forget about that. I'll try, Laura. Will you, Philip? We'll never mention it. Ever. To your family, you mean? To anyone. It'll be a secret. It will. If nobody knows, perhaps it won't matter. I'm not sure, Philip. I think it'll matter. Always. To me. I don't understand. No, you wouldn't understand, mister. Come on, let's get out of here where we can talk. No. What? You heard us. You don't want to go. Well, you keep out of the... No, I right? won't. What kind of a man are you anyway? This girl ain't done nothing to be ashamed of except earn her living, which is probably more than you ever done. It makes you think you're good enough to judge That's her enough. anyways. You'll try to forget about it. Did you ever think of anybody but yourself? Mister, you're no good. Laura here's worth a hundred like you. I'm proud of her. I don't care what she's done or who knows it. You're proud of me, Sam? Of course I am. Are you coming, Laura? Tell him, Laura, go on. Tell him. Well? No, Philip. I am not coming. I'm going to stay here. You heard her, mister. Now get out before I break a bottle over your head. Goodbye, Laura. And you, bartender, you'll die for this. Don't try that, Locke. You keep dueling out of this. Nobody tells me what to do, Marshal. Dueling? What's dueling got to do with this? Locke's hired Dueling's gun. No. He'll kill you, Sam. Dueling is crazy enough to... Yeah. He is, Sam. I've been waiting outside like you said. Why aren't you there now? Because he's coming right up front street. All right, Chester. After he comes in, just keep an eye on the door, huh? Yes, sir. Sam, Dylan's going to be here in a minute. You better get out of sight. Well, I ain't afraid of you. You heard me, Sam. Now get out of sight, will you? Okay, Marshal. I come for Sam. Where at is he? What do you want him for, Dolan? Well, I've been paid to shoot him. That's what for. You want to hang, Dolan? I was born to hang. Where at is he? Look, I'm going to throw you in jail for a couple of days. Maybe things will be clearer to you then. Now, come on. Oh, no. My soul now. Don't do that. I... I gotta earn my five hundred dollars. All right, but you're gonna have to shoot it out with me first. With you? What what have you got to do with it? I, I don't want nothing to do with you. There's a law against murder, do it. I know that. And what makes you think you can shoot Sam and get away with it? I got five hundred dollars right here in my pocket. You wanna see it? Dolan, see if you can understand this. Either you take your money and you get out of Dodge or you're going to jail. I ain't going to jail. You want to draw on me? No fool. Then get out fast. Now go on. Move. You... You don't leave a man much choice, Marshal. I'll have to go. Bye. Got rid of him, Marshal. And I hope so, Sam. He wouldn't have had much of a chance at you anyway. What? Look at Laura there. I wouldn't have missed him, Sam, even if he had got the Marshal. Well, I'll be... Where'd you get that shotgun, Laura? It's yours. The one you keep upstairs. I borrowed it. You know something, Sam? There's blood on this girl. Did she ever tell you that her father was a riverboat captain? Hey, Marshal. Um... Marshal, I'm closing up the bar. You'll have to do all your drinking somewhere else tonight. 
That'll be a pleasure. Laura. <laughs> Come on, Laura. I, I, I want to hear more about your old man. Sure, Sam. Sure. <laughs> 